So if you recently bought a Shure SM7B and you're looking to figure out how do you connect it, how do you make it work, what are all the components that you need, or maybe if you're in the market for one and you're trying to figure out what do I even have to have to make this work, I'm gonna show you in this video because when you buy the Shure SM7B, this is what you get. <laughs> you get the Shure SM7B. You don't get any connectors or anything. So I'm gonna show you every single thing you need and I'm gonna let you hear it and judge for yourself if you think that my setup is good. All the links to what I'm showing you are gonna be down in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. I love, love, love this mic and I can't wait to show you how all of it connects together. So the first thing that you gotta consider is that the Shure SM7B requires what's called an arm or a studio boom arm. I use the Rode PSA1. It's about $100 and it's an incredible arm. It's got a lot of capability. It holds the mic nice and steady but it can move move in any direction you want and I mount it here to my desk very easily. When you're connecting the SM7B to your arm, you're gonna need this extender. It matches all the hardware of the SM7B and it actually comes from Sure. This will all be linked down below. This little $8 piece. But basically it's just an extender that connects to the SM7B and then connects to your studio arm. So this is what it looks like on the SM7B and then it just allows a little bit more room for the XLR cable to plug in. Speaking of XLR cables, you will need two XLR cables. I recommend six feet so that it can work all the way down the boom arm and connect into the cloud lifter, which I'll talk about here in just a second. I use cable matters I, for a couple of reasons. One, they're black, there's no silver on the connector, so it all matches the SM7B. It has a nice clean look once it's all connected. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the mic to the arm and let you see how that process works, and then we'll talk about what else you're gonna need. The best way to connect the SM7B to the studio arm is to connect the extender first and then connect the SM7B to the extender. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then you can connect this without having to spin it all around. And once you get that where you want it, you can kind of position the mic how you want. And next you want to connect your XLR cable like that. So that's all connected there. And this is what it looks like on the end product. So the first XLR cable connects directly to the SM7B, runs along the track of the arm here, and it's specifically designed to hold the XLR cable in place and then it connects to the cloud lifter. The cloud lifter is what's called a mic activator, and this gives your SM7B about 20 decibels more volume without clipping. Here's what this means. When your microphone is too high, when the volume's too high, you get clipping. That's where it gets so loud that it really can't handle it, and you start to get that kind of bzzz sound that's very jarring when you're listening to it. It's too, it's too loud for what it can handle. What it does is it gives 20 dB extra, 20 decibels extra of clean gain. So you get the volume without the clipping. And this is just one of the things about this microphone. It's very quiet. And that's because it's really intended to be a studio microphone where it only picks up what's spoken directly into it. So when you use this microphone, this is why it's especially good for podcasting, you wanna get right up on it and speak directly into it. And then it's gonna pick up just your voice and it's not gonna pick up anything else in the room. This room that I'm sitting in is incredibly echoey, all right? Right now, what you're hearing me on is the Rode NTG, which I did a video about here. But the, the NTG is a great mic, but it tends to pick up a little bit of the echo in this room where the Shure SM7B just doesn't. But with that, you get a trade-off where you get a little bit more of a quiet mic, so the cloud lifter gives you a little bit more gain and it's still super, super clean. So the final piece of this puzzle is the audio interface. This is what basically takes in the sound from the microphone and then transfers it to your computer. And what I recommend is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, and it's this little box that sits on my desk right here. The XLR cable plugs into it from the cloud lifter. So again, we're going from the microphone to the cloud lifter, from the cloud lifter to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And then there's a USB cable that connects from the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 to your computer, and then from there, you can run it however you want through GarageBand or whatever software you're using. So with all that, I wanna put it all together and let you hear what the SM7B sounds like when it's all connected. Okay, so everything is hooked up, and this is what it sounds like, and you can see 
I can move this anywhere. If I move it further away, it's gonna be harder for you to hear me again, because it's a pretty quiet mic. So I put it right up on me, but I can easily move it away from me. I can move it back, I can move it down, I can move it up. There's just all kinds of things I can do with it in terms of its usability on the Rode PSA1. But the mic itself, you can tell, even just switching from the audio that you were hearing from the Rode NTG, which again is a great mic, but switching from that to the Shure SM7B, it's just an incredible upgrade in sound. I mean, there's just really not a mic quite like this that I have found. So if you're in the market for it, I really think that this setup is one of the cheapest ways to go, even though it's a pretty expensive mic. These components that I put together are very high quality, but they won't break the bank. And you'll have a magnificent microphone that some of the top podcasters in the world use. Definitely check out this video right here where I actually unbox each one of these components and show you exactly kind of what they look like, how they fit together. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. I am so excited about helping entrepreneurs, aspiring authors spread their message and make an income doing it. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe with this video a like and I'll see you in the next video.